looking back. All right, we are live. Welcome, welcome, everybody. We have Beverly Thomas Thompson with us here today. So happy to have Bev with us today. I've known Bev for quite a few years now, and I'm excited to see all of the great things that she's been doing in the space of sales. And so she's going to share a lot with us. Just to give you a little on her background, um, Beverly founded Hewlett Strategic Services in 2016, a consulting practice that is passionate about helping SMEs and large enterprises transform their sales culture, their strategy, processes, and competencies. Her company utilizes the knowledge and insights that she's gained over the years to create actionable steps, commercial strategies, and best practices to innovate and drive new sales and service paradigms. And she's, she's earned, earned the respect, the respect of, many of many peers for always being at the forefront of transformation and go-to-market activities for new products, technology, and culture. So welcome, Beverly. Hey, Addy girl, what's up? I just put on my headset because I realized I didn't have it on, so. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> All right. So, Bev, can you just share with us a little bit about your journey, how you got to where you are now? I know I read a little blurb a while ago, but it's so good to hear from the actual guests tell their own journey. Oh, Lord. Short story, medium story, long story. <laughs> <laughs> Short to medium. Short to medium. Oh, my goodness. Um, so I'm going to write a book one day. But mm -hmm. a little country girl come from country, went to Unity Primary School, then Oberlin High School. Mm -hmm. And um, when I was at high school or a child, just generally, I don't know, man, but I'm not sure I want to relive. Well, I would never want to relive my child experience again. Never, ever. And I take oath mm -hmm. against that. Mm -hmm. Now, um, with that kind of life, you focused on survival. That was for me. So you're always trying to survive. And right. when, I, when I left high school, I was still in that same mode. However, when I turned 17, I was 17, yes, the October and as I hit 17, I pretty much had nowhere to live. Wow. And, um, and that was challenging, pretty much very, mm -hmm. very challenging. But, you know, you have neighbors in the community and persons of interest who said, mm -hmm. no, 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 this girl here, no, come and stay with me and you would be good. And mm -hmm. even, when I, even when I was going to school, uh, my teachers had to come several times just to convince um, my guardian that I should go to school. So through right. all of that, I just navigated that kind of entire trajectory. And here it mm -hmm. is, I'm 17. I pretty much, you know, what should I do now? I remember for about three, four months, I just, you know, idled and just sat by because it's the first time in my life after exam, I had nothing to do and nowhere to go. So I just enjoyed myself and idled until reality struck me that I could not mm. continue like this forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so the country girl got on a bus, go downtown and find a job. Now, in my time, you find a job in a wholesale. That is the next job because I, all I had was, I don't know, history, agree, and something else, some other subject. And nobody, mm -hmm. want, nobody wanted to give me a decent job with those things. So right. survival mode, I have to find money. So I went and I worked downtown in the wholesale where I knew pickpockets and everybody on the street know how the street run, run from downtown to crossroads every now and then when there was a little thing, you know. So, yes. you know, I kind of get the, the, the human personable serving everybody from that perspective. And then mm -hmm. I worked in similar jobs um, for a few years. But I saw those things as just preparing me for the next level. And after a mm -hmm. few years, I decided that... Um, you know, there's another way. And I figured it out and I entered telecommunications. And when, nice. I, when I entered telecoms, um, they took me on the basis that I would have gone back to school. And I remember on the day I started, I remember the guy, Lawrence McNaughton is his name. He said hi to me recently. And he looked at me and he said, give me that little one. That little one, look like she can work. <laughs> This is this is Kim Valwell. She looked like she can't can work. It's all right. Employ her. And mm -hmm. I, got, I got into telecoms. And for me, I was in corporate now, the, the, the big space, the big open space. Big and boys. I, big boys. And I set my sight, sight on just doing well, just going back to school immediately, worked as hard as I can, educated myself. Um, I was involved in everything, every pananak I was there, every project. And mm -hmm. then I was also involved in a lot of um, 
technological transformation, I would say. So most right. things that happened in this country, because at that time it was Cable Wireless who was a big boy in terms of technology and, mm -hmm. and the network and the infrastructure. And so I got, I, I started as a sales rep, not a sales rep, a customer service representative. And mm -hmm. I spent 13 years there. And when I left, I was the head of department, um, senior executive level. And at that point, I was doing um, what you would call premier account manager. What that meant is that you handled all the big accounts, big boys like Ray and Nephew and Grace and Sanders and UA. And you are responsible for implementing their network right across the region, everything that they had in terms of data and telecoms infrastructure. And mm -hmm. then B2B was the name of the game. And that's the space you played in. So I played in that space for a very long time and understood well and got a lot of training. And them time, mm -hmm. you were getting a lot of training. I don't think it, you get so much training now from corporate as in those days, but I got a lot of training then. So started small, started out of as a frightened 17 year old and you built your confidence over time um, with education and with experience and with success over time you kind of sharpen your game so and i'm yeah. still learning so that's why i'm a director so no <laughs> all right so wonderful wonderful journey and i mean when people listen to this episode they can clearly see that you can start basically from the very very grown bottom and work your way up you know once yes. you have determination yes. once you focus when you once you know what it is that you're working towards you can yes. get there yes 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 and sometimes you don't know exactly because i didn't know exactly what i was working towards but right. i knew i always knew that there was something more and i was always going after more Mm -hmm. and, and, and after a while, I realized a pattern developed. I was mm -hmm. always in customer service. I was always nice. in sales. I mm -hmm. always had a job that did not exist before. So I've always had a job where I write the job description. I've mm. always been in departments where it never existed before and that didn't exist. So I was a part of the startup team. And right. so I was a part of the startup for Flow when it started in 2006. And nice. so I understood how to build a company from the ground up. So it's just a mixed bag of experiences um, right mm -hmm. across different um, different industries. Knowing my own business, I've worked with like about 10 industries. And so mm -hmm. I feel I could go work in any one of them because I understand them that well. Yeah, brilliant. So yeah. sales is the, what would you call it now? Sales is the cornerstone, right? Of any yes. business? Of if you of businesses, <laughs> ideas too, <laughs> and friends too. <laughs> so why is it important, Bev? Now we're getting into the meat of the matter, to generate yeah. leads and have a pipeline in your business. Wow, okay, to generate leads and have a pipeline. No, you just asked me for one whole day workshop right there, but we won't <laughs> go there, <laughs> we won't go there. Now, if you have a business, the business will never ever um, move off until you sell something. You sell mm -hmm. one product, you sell to a customer until somebody decides to trust you, to believe in it, find value in it, and mm -hmm. to ex exchange their hard earned money or cash for the thing. Right. Now, leads are potential customers. People mm -hmm. who you believe are more likely or have the highest probability of buying your product. Those are mm -hmm. leads. After you've taken them through your funnel or through you know set of things, you email them, you call them, you send them a proposal, whatever that is, whatever your sales process look like, you now mm -hmm. end up with a set of people that have the highest potential of buying your thing. And it's called right. a pipeline of business. And mm -hmm. so it must have a value. You should be able to predict what your money, your cash flow is going to be from your pipeline of business. Mm -hmm. So almost see it almost like a strainer. You dump a lot of what now, I don't know, greater, <laughs> greater coconut in a strainer. Right. Yes. But what you're doing, you're not just going after any coconut. You have defined the coconut, which is a target market profile, avatar, whatever you want to call it. You have mm -hmm. defined what that is. You go after the people where you know they are. You understand how they behave. 
how they think, where they spend their time, online, offline, what are their pain points, challenges, aspirations, etc. And you study that very well. And when you know that, you, you are more efficient at it. And so you don't spend a lot of time going after, after the wrong people. You go right. after more of the right people. And so what you call your conversion, you have a higher number of people that you go after, end up in your pipeline, which is a book of business, or the mm -hmm. set of things that are more likely to convert to cash. That is a rhythm and a system that mm -hmm. every business must have. Gotcha. Yeah. So it, don't, it doesn't matter what you're selling, whether you are the wholesale downtown or you are a supermarket or you are a branding specialist where you help people with branding and public relations yes or you're selling high ticket items it really doesn't matter yes. you need to have people who fit your ideal um customer customer. Mm -hmm. and you have to ensure that you have lots of them in your pipeline at all times a lot of them in your pipeline at all times because if it's a supermarket it's it's different it's very transactional it's you know probably impulsive it's 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 uh, on maslow's hierarchy of needs or food but you have to do things to keep me coming back to that supermarket. And so right. you know that your footfall coming through that door, maybe 10,000 persons every month, whatever that yeah. is in Jamaica. Yeah, right. But you have to do things to keep me loyal, to keep me interested. Mm -hmm. If every time I come to your supermarket, I can't find my two favorite things. What do you think is going to happen? Can you find somewhere else? That happened to me this evening, yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny you said that because I went somewhere earlier today and um, the person said to me that they were shopping with a particular supermarket in Kingston. Yes. And they were the, the, the supermarket guy was calling her because she pays $500 for them to shop for her and carry the, to deliver the groceries to her house because she okay. just don't have the time to do it herself. Okay. And I was like, mm, I didn't know they offered that service. But I think I still like to go myself. Yes, yes. You know, have that experience myself, right, especially right. when I'm picking up certain items. Exactly. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, you've raised an important point. No, here it is that through this entire experience, they've created another, well, they've discovered another type of customer because mm -hmm. they've offered um, through their pipeline or how they communicate or just, just trying to diversify and try to pivot and still keep their customers that, that they had. So now yeah. they're delivering, now they're shopping for me. So it's all a part of playing the space and playing the game and make sure that you serve your right customers because who knows, they could have developed an entire channel. Um, she's not the only person who's doing this, I'm sure. There are True. several others who want this kind of convenience. And I think Agreed. I'm gonna try it. Yes. <laughs> You're gonna try them out? Um, yes, I'm gonna try it because I've seen it. I see people walking around with trolleys with lists. And I figured out that's what they're doing. No, if you know exactly mm. what you want, and it's not a lot of choice, and you know the brand and the size, etc. I think right. But well, apparently they communicate within WhatsApp to and send you the pictures to make sure oh. that cool. Yeah. Cool. Okay. They take it a step further. It's very personalized. Oh, fine. That's a lot of value. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> All right, Bev, could you share with yeah. us three to four characteristics a business needs to truly embrace the agile mindset during this time? And I know you did a full series on LinkedIn on that recently, but I'd love for you yes. to share with us maybe three to four of those characteristics in this little yes. conversation. That was one of, I think, one of my most, um, the one I enjoyed a lot. Um, nice. Just have an agile mindset in, in, in this time. And it's mm -hmm. really, we, we've always needed to be agile. Mm -hmm. But I think what has happened is that it has catapulted us right now. And what the agile mindset really means is that it first begins with a mindset up here, how we mm -hmm. think about delivering something. If it's a project, it's how you think about delivering the project. If it's, right. internal, if it's internal to your company and you're launching a new product or you're changing a process or you're changing a system, it's... Agile is about delivering value as you go along and you do not wait until you have completed the entire thing before it starts delivering some kind of benefit. Mm -hmm. And so what you find is that you're checking in with the owners of the product or the owner of the experience or the owner of whatever you're changing 
Right. Am, I, am I okay here? I've done, I don't know, I've done step one and step two. What do you think about it? What's your input? And at that stage, the customer can say to you, no, I'm not okay. Oh, yes, go ahead. But yes, can you give me that now? Because I can begin to use that now and I can mm -hmm. get some benefit from it. And that's 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 one piece, well, total piece of agile. But then it's mm -hmm. spin off into other things. For example, you are in the customer experience business. Now, right. if you're thinking agile and delivering value incrementally, you want to make sure that the process is simple and easy for your customers. And sure. so you, you cut out all the extra things, the extra steps, the extra hoops that your customers have to go through cut them out, make it lean, make it agile so that it is easy to do business with you, to communicate to you, to complain mm -hmm. to you, to buy from mm -hmm. you, right? Whether, and it's online now, so you really have to think those things through intentionally. And right. another piece I want to talk about agile is still having the organization structure remains, but it's more of a matrix kind of, kind of organization where mm -hmm. We are especially, we're thinking like the customer and for the customer. Mm. And if you're thinking through delivering a total experience for your customer, then right. individuals can no longer sit in their departments or their seats or their section and say, I am doing my thing the right way. It is not possible. Right. Because it is the interdependence of all the pieces that come together neatly to deliver what the customer expects true and if you are intentional about that then you have to collaborate and you have to put the customer in the center of your table or get an empty chair and put in your <laughs> put in your office or put in your backyard wherever you're thinking about the customer and what would the customer do what would they say will they like this and so we have to bring the pieces together in an agile way to serve um, our customers. Agreed, agreed. Mm -hmm. So it's important to embrace the mindset, as you said, the agile mindset, um, mm -hmm. create a frictionless, effortless experience. Yeah. Now, what about companies who don't, they're not about that agile mindset? What's going to happen to them? Wow. You know, I, 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 I'm going to answer this two ways. <laughs> Some of them is not going to work out, pan out very well. And some co companies I have observed, they survive because of their size and because of their reputation of, you know, 50 years, 60 years, 30 years. They survive because their brands are there and we believe in them. And they survive, but their potential is not really being realized. The true potential is not really being realized when they're not thinking like that. The other set of customers is that they will fail. The other set of companies, they will fail. Mm -hmm. they, will, they will fail if they are not um, adopting that kind of execution. Today, right now, there are companies that I am talking to where mm -hmm. what they need is for their managers to be able <laughs> to think medium term and execute tactically now. Yeah. They, they want them to be able to recognize which are the critical pieces and execute well because we've slashed the budget. Yeah. And whatever you're doing now, it must be precise. And it is that agility. They want you to deliver, think and deliver, think and deliver as you go along. That mm -hmm. means you make the best decision with the information you have, making sure that you're very strategic in your thinking, but make mm -hmm. the best decision with the information you have as you go along. Trust your gut, your judgment, your intuition. Use data and stop yeah. assuming things. You have True, data. data you check what is going on around you because you can't just make those decisions on your own in your silo inside your company. And True. so there are two sets. Some will survive because they have the money, they have the capital, they have the reputation, they have the brand. Um, mm -hmm. Others will not. In this current situation, I don't know how it's going to pan out for whom. All right. So selling generally, right, Bev, is yeah. a hard thing. I don't think it's very easy, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you have to call 100 people to get one person to, you know, buy the product or the service. So after you've heard 20 no's before yeah. you even get one yes, yeah. what is your advice to someone in sales or even an entrepreneur 
that does their own selling? How can they stay motivated when it's not exactly the most gratifying experience? You know, it, it doesn't make you feel like you are, I don't know if worthy is the right word, but depending on mm -hmm. some of the people that you get when you call and the things that they may say to you, mm -hmm. it can be quite demotivating to go to the next call or to pick yes. up the phone and, you know, communicate with someone else. What's your yes. experience there? Ah, uh, what's my experience? What I would recommend? Everything together. No. Yeah. It starts with your brain. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with your mind. That's where it starts. Because some people may see the first of all, sales is the only job where you get to tell your boss what to pay you. That's the first thing. It's the only job where you get to tell your boss what to pay you. You get a fixed mm -hmm. salary, but the rest is up to you right so it starts with your mind it starts with um i am not begging anybody to buy anything i have something to deliver i have something very worthwhile and i know i'm giving value if you say no today i move to the next person it's just mm -hmm. not the right time for you to buy so i mm -hmm. don't take those things personally they need right. to read, think and they need to read think and grow rich that's the first book they need to read <laughs> Think and go rich. Change and your you, mindset. Change your mindset. Make sure your mindset is ready for this because people work towards no, actually, and rejection. Mm -hmm. And if you if you have a great relationship with no's, it means that you are reaching out to more people. If you are not getting no's, it means that you are not talking to a lot of people for you to get even the yeses. True. And you have to understand how many no's you're going to get before you hear a yes. Sure. Because you might hear 30 no's and on your 31st yes, it is five customers combined. Very true. And you have to understand the conversion. So you understand the process. Get used to the process of selling and what mm -hmm. is involved and where your mindset is and your relationship with no's. Love no's. I would tell any salesperson, just love the know them. Because if you're loving <laughs> no's, if you are loving those, love, love, love when the them nose. tell you no. Love the no's because people who are not hearing a lot of no's, they are not prospecting. They are not they're going not calling out. People. They're not calling anybody or they're not having, you know, I don't know, um, lead nuggets or they're not having enough you know, webinars or whatever the sales process is. You love no's because here's what no's mean a whole heap of things to you. Know, no's mean that you can nurture that person you can give them value in the meanwhile you can have them a date in a database where you educate them where sure. you can understand their pain points you can give them information you can talk to them without selling them sure yeah so love knows i would say love knows and have a great relationship with it because i'm gonna I'm, yeah i'm gonna say this because i think a lot of entrepreneurs go through this as mm -hmm. well we start our businesses and um, we have our products, but we feel shame for call somebody and say, bite. Mm. We don't feel good about that. Yeah. Now, before you start the business or while you're developing your business canvas and so on, sort that out in yourself. Sort out your whole brain and your whole self. Have a good relationship with the product believe in it know that it it creates value you can explain it you know what the aspirations are of the people that you're targeting be very comfortable with all of that i'm doing a training next week and i just sent off some work to the guys and said hey guess what guys you got to know your value got to know your target market who are they where are they where you find them how you find them what they think because they have to come to my training with that and they're yeah. entrepreneurs yeah so get that and once you have that it's not so bad. You're going to love nose. I love nose. <laughs> well, I would hope so. You are a sales guru. <laughs> so, I'm sure you've heard way more nose than the average person. Yes, I do. And my sales cycle is very long. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah and probably even more now since pandemic, right? Of course. Everybody's yeah. going through it. Everybody's yeah, going through it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. So many people have been focused on selling using LinkedIn. I've been been a little bit more active on that platform, I must say, in the last oh, couple I months. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are some strategies do you think you can use for selling for either for a B two B or a B two C on LinkedIn? Ah, uh, LinkedIn is the largest professional um, network. Mm -hmm. it's more directed to B two B, I would think. 
but mm-hmm. there is a space for B two C. And when I say B two C, it's probably the individuals who, who run the companies or the brand, the personal brand, or the face of the company. Right. Um, but LinkedIn is a great space to be. I'm, you know, half active, probably not, you know, very very active, but I do quite a bit on LinkedIn. So mm-hmm. I would say on LinkedIn, in, in LinkedIn is not a hardcore selling place platform. Oh my goodness, you should tell yeah. people that. I get messages in my inbox every day. Me people too. just, yes. it's crazy. And, and yes. I, I don't know where they find me and they start selling. They don't They don't actually want to find out what it is that I do. I had this yes. guy message me last week that, oh, you know, if I'm interested in Forex trading, I said, I'm familiar with it, but no, I'm not interested. And even after I said, no, I'm not interested, he went further to say, let's hop on a call and have a discussion. I, I just yes. said, I'm not interested. Yes, because he doesn't understand the platform he's on. And he also oh doesn't God. understand the sales process. No, I, I don't know if I can buy from someone I don't know. I don't, <laughs> I don't trust. <laughs> I don't like. I, I, I don't know if it was your credibility. I don't know what's your value system. I, I don't know those things. So on LinkedIn, you give value. And if you yeah. know this, if you want to learn about any industry go to linkedin be a True. part of the groups that are there mm-hmm. and giving value you share because every one of us have a unique experience with whatever wherever we're coming from with our experiences it is unique to us mm-hmm. and it is our it is our unique perspective that gives the value because there's always somebody out there just want to understand and know more about something right linkedin is where you demonstrate your credibility it is not for your resume Mm -hmm. it is not for the list of items on your job description Mm -hmm. or your objectives what you're going to do (laughs) (laughs) what you're going to do everybody need to listen to this episode i'm telling you (laughs) it's not no it's not your job description and because your job description described what you are supposed to do. Your objective is a request of what you're supposed to do. But you have to demonstrate your credibility about how you use your competence and your experience and your know-how to deliver whatever those results were, wherever you are now, or wherever you have done, whatever you have done in the past. Mm-hmm. And, and and why it is I should see you as a credible force to be, I don't know, doing what you're doing now. True. Right. So you can't have a resume that says you're a customer service person and then you're, you know, you're talking to me as an electrician. No, you probably is a credible electrician, but you need to fix up your profile and show (laughs) me. (laughs) And show me. Have some content that back that up. Exactly. Right. So give value. Mm -hmm. Contribute to the space. True. When you see stuff um in your my friend used um passion of genius to me yesterday she said that is your space passion of genius so yes Stacey, i love that one mm-hmm. contribute to the space because um people post things there are articles about different things and you have something to say you have a voice yeah. you have a unique perspective and uh, tell your story I don't think I personally have done that um, very well, which I'm going to try to do more through videos. Mm -hmm. But tell your story because people, us, we want to get to know you, you the person. Sure. I've heard a lot of conversations around there is really no B2B and B2C anymore. It is humanity. (laughs) It's it's, it's humans selling to other human beings. Humans. Because we all make decisions from an emotional perspective. Yeah, and we do. We back it up with the budget or the money we have or whatever. But we're all human beings just trying to communicate. So I would say give value, um, communicate your, your credibility, build trust with other mm-hmm. people, support people. Because I mm-hmm. just like and comment on people's things that I need, you know, just to be, they're, they're just starting out and I want them to get confident in the space. Because mm-hmm. it, it can be daunting, you know, a group of professionals and what do I say now? What really people want to hear from you. Yeah. And, and I, I've heard Terry Carroll talk about this all the time. You're not seeking perfection. I too suffered from perfection as well. <laughs> I thought that it had to be perfect and looked a certain way, etc. Until I realized that you just needed to be yourself. Yeah. Just be Yes. <laughs> You'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Very true, very true. And video is a big thing now, you know. Um, 
it's, it's funny because I interviewed a gentleman earlier by the name of Ethan Butte. He has a podcast called the Customer Experience Podcast. Yes. And he works for a company called Bomb. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what Bomb Bomb does, you ever heard of them before? I've heard, I've heard that name. What they do? So, so what they do is they're like a video platform, babe, which I thought was so brilliant. And, yeah. and their motto is they humanize the customer experience. So what he's saying yeah. is instead of responding to someone via email in black and white, Yep. His platform allows you to respond in video. Oh. So you just record the video and his platform pushes it out with an intro and an outro and it goes to the person's inbox. It's almost like a video email marketing yeah, software. So similar to I think Loom, Loom does something similar. Yeah. I thought that was brilliant. And then yes. um I've invited him. I mean, I, I, I interviewed him on the podcast, which is audio only. So his yes. episode will probably release sometime next month. Mm -hmm. But I've invited him to become a guest on the Facebook Live because yes. I thought what he was doing was so amazing. Yes. But when he responded to me today with regards to that request, which was independent of the podcast, yes, he responded in a video. <laughs> yes. He's like, hey, Yannick, yes. was so good interviewing with you this morning. Yes. I actually have some relatives coming in on July the 20th and I haven't seen them in over a year. So I don't think that date would be really good. But if you could give me a date before or maybe two weeks after that, that would be perfect. And I mean... I was like, yeah. I was wowed. I was like, wow, this is brilliant. Yes. And did you know that LinkedIn, you can talk to people via video on LinkedIn? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you, I, you can send messages and you also have voice notes on LinkedIn as well. So yeah, I, do, I, I do voice notes, I do video, I do uh, text <laughs> on LinkedIn. Yeah. But that's brilliant though, that's brilliant, yes. Because you, you raise a good point, Yanni, because in the sales space as well, so mm -hmm. it's a, a, an entire new dispensation for a lot of us salespeople because right. we're accustomed to face to face, set the mm -hmm. appointment, drive there, make a presentation, walk in, talk to the receptionist, etc. You can read body language, you can see the place, what's going on. Right. On virtual, you do not have the benefit of any of those things. No. But you have the body language because you yes. can, if you on video, you can still see the person's facial expressions. You know, yes. you've been talking for 31 minutes now, and each time yes. you talk, I can see that you're excited. I can yes. see that you believe in what you're saying. Yes. I can see that you mean what you're saying. But that's what you think, though, Yanni. So if you're afraid <laughs> of the platform, <laughs> if you're not accustomed to the platform, you're afraid of it because your mind plays tricks on you. In your right. mind, it is different. And it is different, a different way of engagement, and you have to learn it, and you have to practice it. So it's a whole new game, too, for all of us who are trying to engage customers and others um, online. Yeah, 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 very true, very true. Yeah. All right. What are some other digital platforms that companies can use to sell on, and what would you recommend as a guide for them to be using these platforms? Because as you said, we're pretty much going into the virtual space. Let's say, for example, you're an insurance agent, as you said, mm -hmm. where you'd go and mm -hmm. have coffee with somebody or you go to their business place. Right. Or let's say you're a car salesman and you have to take people for test drive. I mean, how does that work now, virtually? Mm -hmm. What are some options that they have they can be utilizing? That's a good question. Um, and it's a very complex question. <laughs> I, would, I would go back to the basics first. Make sure you have the basics. Who am I selling to? Mm -hmm. and who do I want to buy my, 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 my products and right. what are their behaviors because um, if I'm selling to a group of people who are not on Instagram not on Facebook then really and truly I could advertise I could create as much value as I want they are not seeing it True. and so you have to talk to your customers um, where are they I know the online space is here it is increasing, but there is a bit of omni going on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you can engage uh, online, complete offline, or a blend mm -hmm. of both. So right. you, first, you need a front door. So even if you have a brick and mortar, you need a front door. If it's a landing page or it's a full-blown website, you need a front door. You need to own your front door. So that's mm -hmm. one way, right? And you need to be able to capture your potential customers some basic information so that you can communicate with them you need mm -hmm. addresses you need telephone numbers what are you going to do to get that 
So you need those things. Build up your lead. Have a front door because I will not go visit your physical door. And if you're not in the online space, I won't know that you're open and ready for business. Right? <laughs> right. So study your audience. Um, there, there's website. It depends on the product. Um, if you hear some a little bit of noise. Yes, I'm hearing your dogs. They look like they're under attack. Sound like no, they're under attack. On no, every house on my street have dogs. Oh, right. So they communicate a lot with each other. Um, oh, so, right, so right now, I think they are communicating. Oh wow! <laughs> right. So, so website either front door or a landing page, right? Or, mm -hmm. um, or you create create some presence depending on the product. If it's a lifestyle product, it's a product that has a lot of pretty pictures and you know emotional. Then you're at IG, although everybody is at, is is on IG. But people mm -hmm. have to be able to find you. Yeah, I don't have to be able to um communicate and contact you. What are my options for that? And mm -hmm. it depends, depends on how much money you have to spend. You may do some Google ads. You may do that. You may um, understand who am I, where I'm searching, depending. I say Google is following me around now. Whatever I say, something pop up on my screen. It's very frightening. Um, but <laughs> can, yeah, you, serious. can you target your customers and retarget them? So, th so that is web. That is Google ads. Those are the traditional um, Facebook, IG. Email marketing is very powerful. So after mm -hmm. you get a website or your landing page or your IG or your FB and gather up people's emails, etc., or telephone right. number, then you can use your WhatsApp and you can push out messages to people. You can mm -hmm. use email, you can use HubSpot or Salesforce, one of those email marketing tools um, to yeah. get your information. So there are lots of options. And the good old telephone exists. Yeah, it still works really well. <laughs> it still works, right? Uh, because there are some people who you may not find um, in that space. And, um, I happen to be interviewing several people for a project I'm on across the world. And these people are very successful. They are doing very well. And when mm -hmm. I asked the question about where you are, the gentleman, they, they've told me, I don't care for social media. Yeah, they don't have time to. They don't have time to. Yeah. But they are the people I want. <laughs> So the big True. question is, how do I reach them? Yeah. So that you can't, I, I agree. You definitely can't negate the telephone. Yes. Because yes. if you're really looking for the big decision makers, trust yes. me, they're not hanging out on LinkedIn every day, pushing out content. No. They're, they're not sending not. people direct messages on LinkedIn. They're not no, on Instagram. No, no, no. no so no. if you really want to get in touch with them, you have to find another very unique way. Yes. And I guarantee they all have a phone. But you would have to be very privileged to have access to that phone number. Yes, or you, you can start with email address, but you have to have something. Right. Like, you have to have a lead magnet. Exactly, Get something why they would want to opt in. Yes, and your to give good, you their email address. And your good old professional friend network still. Works. Yes, yes. Agreed, agreed. Yes, Pull yes, on yes. the people who you know. True, yes, true. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, man. Call <laughs> people buy from people who people who they like and who they know. And if you get referred by somebody that you know, yes. you're more likely to feel a little bit more confident because you're not just at ground zero, you're just a little bit above ground zero. Right, you are, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, and if you're a transactional product, which is a one, two to buy, right. then you have to create engagement in the online space. Mm -hmm. So I can get excited about the product. I'm interested, you're talking yeah. to me. You show me how it works for other people. You show the, mm -hmm. the difference it makes. You have to give me something to want to follow you, opt in, call you, email you, like you, whatever those things are. And then eventually sure. come, come to your store if I have to come. Or I order through WhatsApp or um, through IG and you deliver it because I trust you to pay my money. And then <laughs> you deliver it. <laughs> agreed, agreed, agreed. So, Bev. Do you have a favorite failure? Is there anything that you failed at in the past that you consider it to be a favorite failure because it has it has been like a pillar or a cornerstone of your current success? In other words, if you didn't fail, have that failure, you probably wouldn't be where you are today. Well, I'm gonna tell you, you know, I've, I've had a, a few, especially in my professional life, mm -hmm. moving, moving, moving through the rungs of, of, of corporate, Right. Um, I remember I was given a job to act in a job. Mm -hmm. Two failures, actually, to act in a job. And, um, and I did the job, and uh, they eventually found somebody for the job. 
and mm -hmm. it was felt that they needed a technical person for the job. Okay. And um, so I was put back to my initial role and the technical person came. Mm -hmm. uh, but what they, what everybody, including me, didn't understand was that the technical competence was not the most important thing for the job. It was your ability to build relationships and provide service and understand mm -hmm. how business is run. Yeah. That was it. The technical was, you know, the next Minor. thing. Right. Mm -hmm. So what they did was um, remove the person and then tell me to take back the job in a permanent space. And I said, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> and then because I knew how much work it had, I didn't care for the money because I didn't want to do the work again. Right. And I wrote a letter and I said, boy, no, I don't want that job. You can keep a promotion. I don't want it. And I've never heard of anybody who's done that, but I've done that. Yes. And I had a boss. Put my phone inside it. I had a boss who said to me, You are crazy. Nobody <laughs> does that. Nobody does that. And I said to her, I don't want it. I'm sorry. And I remember she and I at 12 midnight cussing, serious cussing as to mm -hmm. why I don't want it, why you should take it. Mm -hmm. and, and I yielded. And if it hadn't been for that role, I would not have moved the way I moved. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice. Because I didn't know what, you know, I didn't know what those things meant. I, I can't, well, I'm very determined and determined people are also stubborn. Sometimes, I, eh? Yes, yes. Sometimes your stubbornness play to your part to, to yes. be positive. Yes. And sometimes you learn some valuable lessons from yes, it. Yes, yes. Um, there's another one. I went to University of the West Indies trying to do my master's program. And because I was in telecoms, I figured that it was okay to do a computer science master's because I felt mm -hmm. that every techie was techie. You know, it right. was easy. Man, I have never felt so down and depressed in my life. Oh, I started wow. the course and I get both two Fs. Wow. Uh, and that was like earth shattering because I'm not accustomed to them things. I'm not get them great. Right. No matter how I suffer, I'm not get them great. And I had to give up. But when I gave up the course, um, and I, it was a scholarship I was on, partial scholarship. Right. And when I gave up the course, I stopped going. And um, the scholarship was advertised the two years later. And the same boss, notice the, the consistency in this story. The same <laughs> boss who convinced me to do a master's, tried at least, and I said, no, yeah. I'm not doing it. She took me to UA and applied for it with me. And I started mm -hmm. doing a master's in tech and failed miserably. Two years later, she come back to me and said, please apply for that scholarship now to do the master's MBA. And I said, no, I'm not going in front of the same people and tell them why I failed. I feel bad. She said, no, tell your story. So, oh. By, by the way, when I was doing that first master's, I also met my hobby and we were in the swing of things. So brain wasn't going on too well them time and either anyway. Um, so, so either if I could try on it, it wasn't going to work. Uh -huh. um, and she convinced me again. I said, Beverly, go in front of the panel and tell them why you failed. Mm -hmm. And I bend and I go. And would you believe the people and believe my story, which was true. I got a full scholarship to do my MBA after nice. failing at the first one. And again, if it wasn't for those experiences, I would not have moved the way I moved and to be doing what I'm doing today. And, lovely, uh, lovely. Yeah, so failure, they do hit us. And no, we're at a crossroads right now. And mm -hmm. we can decide whether we fail or we move forward. Very but true. Is unpredictable. <laughs> very true. Very true. Very true. All right, Bev. So in this, in this, in the whole um process of you running a business, can you share with us maybe one online tool, website, or resor resource, or even an app that you couldn't live without in your business? If you didn't have that app, that website, that tool, you couldn't function every day. My dear, it's a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> because I started the business with a laptop, a phone, and myself. Now we've mm -hmm. expanded to be doing more than that. But I find that um, QuickBooks for holding me accountable. Mm -hmm. um, my website is my storefront um, mm -hmm. and my other online engagements. Mm -hmm. um, Canva has become my personal friend. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my personal friend. I love Canva. Um, HubSpot. To engage nice. with my my customers uh, below the line, um, mm -hmm. there are a few others, but those are my primary ones: website, 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 HubSpot, 
Canva, QuickBooks. Um, I'm starting to use Teams somewhat with my Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams? Yes, because, mm -hmm. oh, Teams, and I couldn't forget Zoom. Of course, Zoom is down, right, hands down. <laughs> You said it's amazing how so many people like Zoom. You know, I didn't, I didn't, um, when I was choosing a webinar platform, I chose yes. Demio um, because oh. after I did my research, they had the best customer service in yes. terms of response time yes. and they were omni-channel. So it didn't matter which platform you were on, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, if you're in their website, once you log on to those platforms, they have a chatbot there. And if the chatbot oh. can't answer a question, it's automatically migrated to a live human being. Even if it's 12 30 in the morning. Oh wow. You will be migrated to a live human being. And I was very impressed with that. And you know, service is very important to me. Mm -hmm, yes. So because of that, I chose Demio over mm -hmm. Zoom. Even mm -hmm. though there are some features that Zoom has that Demio doesn't have, but they're not they're not that catastrophic of, of mm -hmm. options. And okay. the good thing about Demio is that they're constantly taking feedback. They literally have like a feedback page mm -hmm. with video of yes. recommendations that clients tell them of things that they want. Mm -hmm. And they ask you to vote on it because every month they have a project team that works on these new features that they're adding to the platform. And I'm, it's based I'm on feedback that. that they get from the customers. Yes. yes. So I've been using Zoom for about maybe two and a half years now. So Zoom has been my baby. I've been doing webinars for a little while now because right. when you are when you have a client that um that's you know dotted across the Caribbean, then you really can't bring um 50 managers. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> one place. I've been doing it. So because I've been introduced to Zoom and in the virtual training space then you need a lot of interaction and a lot of feedback and tools etc but i'm gonna check that out though because it's always mm -hmm. good to learn new and things. i don't know if zoom allows you to have breakout rooms when you have training sessions do you um, train on zoom of course absolutely it's my favorite okay because <laughs> okay, microsoft teams allows you that to that to do that as well but i find that microsoft teams is in terms of security their platform is more secure than Zoom. It's not that flexible. I've, I've tried it. My clients, mm -hmm. my clients, um, I have to use Teams on theirs as well. And right. So I've done webinars via Teams. Just recently, I had to go into their office to do Teams because I couldn't stay from where I am. Um, really? To do a live. Yeah, I don't know what happened, but I couldn't do it. So I had to go into the office. Um, oh, no. What I like about Teams, though, Teams allow you to upload documents. So I guess if you have your trading documents and things that you mm -hmm. need to have access to, it's there in the background sitting and waiting for you. And you can share them. Um, and they can... You know, I do lots of training sessions with yeah. Teams. Um, yeah. And I have breakout rooms. I put them into groups to the role play. Yeah, and it allows me to jump into those sessions and listen to what they're saying and exactly. come back into the main yes. room. So yes, Teams yes. is really, really good. Yes, It's my favorite, breakout and polls. Nice, nice, yes, yes. I yes. love polls. So you yes. can get the feedback. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, share with us maybe one or two books that have had the biggest impact on you. I know you shared one already, Think and Grow Rich. Oh, yes, um, yes. Um, So you have any others that you think, you know, as a salesperson or even just a business owner, you really need to make yourself right. familiar with it? Yeah, so um, people like me, we, we dabble and dot in, lot, dots in, in lots of books because of <laughs> what we do, yeah, right? right. We're always dabbling in something. Yeah. And I'm telling someone that I am not a front-to-back cover reader. Mm -hmm. I read a lot, but not the front to the back. Right. I read and take what I want and um, try and do something or forget it, or I may go back to it, and I've recently discovered Audible. So oh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading five books one time on Audible. <laughs> you mean you're listening to five books <laughs> at the same time? Yes, listening. But my hands on favorite for the sales perspective is um the sales manager survival guide. Mm -hmm. I would tell any sales manager or team leader um just to get that book. It's it's mm -hmm. hands down one of one of my favorites. Um, my friend Stacy introduced a book to me last year, January, which I find um, I think I have it right here. Um, find quite useful. It's written by Michael Gerber. Gerber, mm -hmm. the E Myth Revisited. Oh um, yes, that's an excellent that, book. Yes, that book totally transforms your mind about how to build your business. Yeah, uh, based sure. on you know, repeatable is on the McDonald's formula. It should be so mm -hmm. packaged that you can anybody can step in your business and deliver it. 
And yeah. so the business can run without you. So mm -hmm. that's why I'm, I'm working towards that. Um, yeah. Another girl, Tiffany, 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 where is she? Tiffany, Tiffany Bova. And she talks about growth IQ. Mm -hmm. And the book, the entire book explores the different options to grow your business, grow revenues, and expand market, expand mm -hmm. your product line. You just talk about that whole bit. And as a business person, you really right. have to be um, changing and pivoting as you go along. So those three books of the, oh, the alchemist now, the alchem alchemist, alchemist. Um, I cook and listen to it. And I've been rewinding so often that I still don't finish. <laughs> <laughs> Because there are just so many nuggets and gems in, in, in that. And I'm, I'm, right. I'm, I'm reading I'm reading that. Um, yeah, so so far, those are my stuff that I've been reading over, nice. over COVID. Yeah. I'm just sharing them here in the chat so that oh. um, anybody who is listening or yeah. any of our guests, they can have a look and at least there's a record of it on the, on the video. Okay, great. Yes, All yes. right, so you've shared with us some of the books that have had the biggest impact on you. No, can you share with us maybe one thing that's going on in your life right now, something that you're really excited about, either something that you're working on to develop yourself or your people? Oh, Lord. Um, a couple of things. Mm -hmm. I'm, really, really, I'm really, really excited about COVID is not a good thing. It's a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think what it has done for me is like almost lift you and push you off of a cliff. Um, and is that a swim, settle, jump, whatever you've got to do yep. something? Yeah, so in the last three months, I've had the tremendous opportunity of just being in the online space, um, a whole lot more. I just got brave and must be honest that I don't really want to do it, didn't want to do <laughs> it. Um, but I got with the program, and surprisingly, I love it now, um, because I find it is more engaging. So mm -hmm. I'm doing some work in that space. I've, al I've already uh, converted face-to-face -to, -face to virtual um, in-person led training. So Excellent. I'm very excited about that because I also think that my participants get a whole lot more value mm -hmm. from the virtual because we're doing pre-work, we're doing work in the space, we're doing shorter modules, bite-sized learning. Yeah. And what I've also done, I'm really doubling down now on focusing on outcomes, doing the training intervention, implementing changes, measure them, monitor them, mm -hmm. look at the results. So I'm taking my customer through a process. Um, and I think the entire virtual space has allowed me to kind of think to be more, more efficient yeah to be more efficient and think more deeply about how you're serving your customers because you want to give value yeah, so I'm, I'm in that space now of converting more and i'm learning more about how to deliver um virtual deliver the virtual space so that That's i'm excited good. about my, my my team that work with me um janik every day janik said miss bev oh my goodness I, I said, go learn it girl go learn it go learn it google it girl this is what i know go and find it and she's such an amazing person she learned bits mm -hmm. learn everything and come back and we're we're working together and we're growing nice. that. yeah <laughs> nice very nice excellent so, I mean, there's a lot to um to capture out there. I mean, sometimes when you think you know about all of the products and services that are out there, you really yeah, don't. You really um, don't. You know, I mean, and there's a lot of opportunity for you to learn from the different options that you have. So, as you said, there's Audible. You can listen to books through Audible. There are podcasts. Yeah. There's a podcast on every single topic that you could possibly think about. There's yeah. a podcast for it. The last statistic yeah. that I checked, it said 838 million people listen to podcasts globally. Mm -hmm. And that was early 2019. I am sure that that number has skyrocketed, especially yes. since the pandemic, right? Yes, yes. So, I mean, outside of that, then there's a social media for people who are not necessarily auditory learners. Maybe they might be visual learners. YouTube is a, is a sea of knowledge. I mean, yes. you can teach it yes. anything to do on YouTube. Yes. I couldn't video edit before COVID. And <laughs> I bought yes. a video editing platform. Yes. And I went on YouTube and I taught myself how to video edit. I, exactly. I created my first animation video today. A, co a video completely full of animation because I have a client who wants me to do an animation course, yes. an online course that's fully animated. So exactly, yeah. You know, we have no reason. I, I found 
that yeah. why we can't do something because the yeah. information is literally at the tip of our fingers. Yes. I, I've been saying to people who I interact with that you should never tell the same person that you don't know about something twice. That's yeah. nice. Yes. I'm not talking to you, Siri. Sorry about that. <laughs> I watch you responding. Yes. I, I, I don't think you could arguably, arguably um, validate why you're saying you don't know about the thing. You may right. not know it in detail, but you should have some periphery idea. The first time you hear it, be curious. And so some of the, some of the characteristics are things that we have to take on now is curiosity. Mm hmm the employee, whoever you work for or work for yourself, be curious. Yeah. Because it is that curiosity and wanting to know more and do more and do it better yeah. that is going to propel you and to be, you know, you, you continue to be a fit in the modern modern workspace. Yeah, agreed. So search for more, find out more, get more, talk to people, access all the free things that are there because mm -hmm. you can actually do a university degree without going to a university if you want oh my goodness look here <laughs> i half of the things that but you can agree to it babe half of the things that is earning your money now it's not what you learned in your mba or what you learned at university no. it's things that you learned outside of that from yes. experience yes 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 absolutely i remember yeah. i was i was i was talking it's not a client meeting right <clears throat> and they were talking about inventory some terms in inventory and um and you know the terms were flying around and i was the one kind of you know moderating meeting and i said can you tell me about that please and he gave me you know which was a, a valid response i said give me a second please and i have no bones about this i'm not ashamed i said let me just check and see what it means huh? and when i i take a minute and i looked and i said but what you just told me a while ago no those two things don't add up right because based on what I read, <laughs> the meaning of those terms. You've educated so yourself. The conversation changed entirely and backpedal, 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 because I now have some information I can put into perspective because it was affecting sales and I couldn't understand why these things were happening. And that's another part of how I engage. I seek to understand all the pockets and the pillars and what's affecting um, driving the customer experience and driving the dollars. Because yeah. sometimes it's not the salespeople. Sometimes it's not the product. It's what goes on inside the business that is affecting sales. And so sure. because I understand how businesses are run and organizations are run, and having worked in a big one and a small one, I step back and pedal back and go to the back and figure out what's happening so that mm -hmm. we can drive the sales and, and, and the service at the front. Yeah. So Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Yeah. Love that, love that, love that, love that. All right, babe. So we are basically at the end of our one hour. I can't believe the time really? flies so fast. <laughs> yeah, we're at 57 minutes. <laughs> so time wow. flies when you're having a good conversation. But before we leave, there are two things I'd like to ask you quickly. So where can our viewers who watch this awesome video find you online? They want to connect with you more. They probably want to engage in some of your products. Probably they even want to hire you for their business. Where can they find you online? Well, um, hulane.com. So the name of our company is Hulane Strategic Services. That is H-U-L-A-I-N-E. Mm -hmm. Hulane.com is where you find us. Uh, you find us on IG, Hulane Strategic Services. You find mm -hmm. us on Facebook, Hulane Strategic Services. You will find me on LinkedIn, Beverly Thompson slash Hulane. Um, so that's where the, on YouTube, Hulane Strategic Services. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So I shared it in the in the chat so they can yeah. jump on. Right. And then during times of adversity or challenge, when you are faced with problems or obstacles, you know, because we all face it on a day to day basis. We're not perfect. Life isn't perfect. Right. Do you have a quote or a saying that you revert to, to kind of help you to refocus or re-strategize or just get back on that, you know, that that path to, to achieve what it is that you're working at? Yeah, especially during this COVID time here, man. There have been days, several <laughs> days, man, where your brain go off rockers and go somewhere else. I mean, it happens to me. Mm -hmm. So what, time, what court what court takes you back? So, um the court that takes me back, and it's a quote um that I kind of adopted from I think my, my hobby. He always said that I've been saying it over the years. This too shall pass. So true. This too shall pass. And after you've gone through a couple of ringers yourself, 
Mm-hmm. You understand that this too will pass. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I actually adopted the power pose where you stand up, put your hand at your waist and say, mm-hmm. you know, I am powerful, I'm beautiful, I'm great. It's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And you almost step out in what I want to be perceived greatness or as assume greatness, but you have to step out in that belief and see it in the making without yeah. it happening. So you have to see that you're recovered. Yeah, Whether you even re- recovering, mm-hmm. yeah, and and, and I, I pray, I, I meditate um, most mornings, I exercise because I, I wake up at five or four thirty every morning and I do two of those things, two of the four things because the days are rough and you know, you just chunking mm-hmm. out deliverables as you go along, so you really have to have the mindset, and of course, my green tea. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so what what impact does the green tea have now it keep you calm no i know it i think it gives you that mental fortitude and and, oh, and, stab- nice. and stability yeah 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 so ah, it's like a, very good. A clean, it's it's something that's actually good for you and eating eating well yeah eating well is important so you touched on yeah. some good things as in terms of maintaining a healthy body because your yeah. mind has to be healthy spiritually you have to be healthy um you in terms of your body needs energy yeah you have to be getting enough sleep yes um yes. so you know because we're all we're a combination of all of these things and if we're not doing the right things in the right proportion then eventually over time it will definitely take a toll on us and impact yes. the other things that we are right. a, yes. a part of and it affects your family so as mm-hmm. entrepreneurs we will go through and just keep choking out the work and just keep going and going and going but in your household you can become strange to the people who love you most. Yeah. So you really have to divide your time. Um, so there has to be the movie night and the games night and all of these wonderful things. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. We have, we, have to, we, have, we have to still be human yes. in what we are doing. And humans being, human beings love connection. And connection means sitting down and talking and yeah. spending time with each other. You know, So just as how you extend yourself to your clients, Yes. In a very human way, you have to do the same for your family. Yes, 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 yes. Um, when everybody else, you know, will leave you and fail you and run away, yeah, you, your family is a bedrock of who you are, who you will be, and yeah, it's family. Agreed, agreed, agreed. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, Beth. Well, we are at the end of our <laughs> conversation. Oh <my laughs> yes. thank you so much for jumping on today and sharing with us i mean it was marvelous fantastic amazing you shared such great nuggets you know and and i put most of the books and stuff that you had and also where the team can connect with you Cool. But I mean, we really, really appreciate it because we know you're busy and it's seven thirty. Well, eight thirty at night. Now you could be spending yeah. time with your family. Mm-hmm. So I really appreciate you taking time to just jump in here and spend some time with us. Yes, and thanks for the opportunity. Thank you so much. You're I'm most really welcome. You. <laughs> you're most right. welcome. Okay, so okay guys. Thanks. We'll see you next time. Good. All right.